dear students today we will be discussing about flux meter so this is a kind of galvanometer which can be used to measure the flux of a magnet so it is it comes with some modifications when compared to the ballistic galvanometer so it has a smaller controlling top and it has a larger electromagnetic damping now um, unlike in a normal um, ballistic galvanometer the flux changes for a very short duration of time and uh, that is being recorded so here uh, that need not be the case uh, the flux change can be for a long duration but uh, like few seconds the deflection obtained does not depend on the time taken for the uh, making the change of flux so that is very 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 important that is your deflection will be depending on the change of flux and not on the rate of change of flux now we'll look at the construction of the flux meter so this flux meter is uh, uh, very similar to ballistic galvanometer here the uh, the input is being supplied uh, from this we have a lead out so here you will be connecting in the search coil mm. so from the search coil you have some uh, current coming and the current is flowing through this path leading into this meter through this annealed silver strip so this is a silver strip available and through that your the current is flowing into the coil and then again we use the same strip to silver strip to lead the current out of the uh, coil mm. this is the moving arrangement so this entire arrangement is being suspended using a silk fiber suspension this so is that is being used to suspend the spring and this is suspended on a spring support since you are using a silk, silk fiber for suspension the controlling torque is being reduced we are not using a spring for leading the current in we are simply using a um, silver strip annealed silver strip to lead the current in and out of the uh, this particular uh, particular arrangement and uh, such an arrangement reduces the required control torque and the search coil as well as the moving coil Mm, are generally having lower resistance and uh, their further resistance is further reduced to increase the damping on the system and the instrument is generally provided with a pointer arrangement and uh, it can also be provided with uh, a torch and mirror arrangement and uh, the scale will be calibrated in terms of weather terms uh, directly in flux in terms of flux now um, what is the principle of operation so whenever uh, the current that uh, current flows through this particular coil mm, there will be some deflection so the current will be flowing through the coil mm, due to a change in flux linking with the search coil okay so once you have a flux linking uh, there is a change in flux linking with the search coil you will have some emf induced and that emf will be causing mm, the current to flow in this particular circuit so you will have uh, you will have a circuit of something like this so this is your flux meter and this is the search coil so whenever the flux link with the search coil changes and emf is induced and since the circuit is complete we have some current uh, we have some current flowing in this particular uh, circuit and this current will be causing um, um, some deflection of the moving system so this current causes a deflection of the moving system and this moving system will be rotating for the whole period of uh, flux change mm. since you have high electromagnetic damping uh, the moving system will be deflecting when you have a flux change and whenever the flux change ceases it will be dampened out quickly and whenever the flux change is not there it will be dampened out quickly and you will have mm, you will have some uh, uh, reading of the point of from 0 to some particular upward point and since uh, your control torque is minimum and uh, the pointer will not come back to mm, uh, the zero position quickly mm. it will be coming back to a zero po position very slowly uh, theoretically it should not come back to zero position but practically it will be coming back to zero position very slowly so you are able to uh, detect the flux once you once you have the uh, uh, once you have some car current flowing through the meter and some deflection occurs and once the uh, flux is removed even if the flux is removed this will 
remain in this position for a very small duration. We will look at the procedure uh, to do this particular experiment or to measure the flux. And the first, the search coil is placed in the space where the magnetic flux is to be measured. So you uh, will have a magnet where you are trying to measure the flux. So you will be placing the search coil within the vicinity of the magnet and then it is withdrawn. So once during the withdrawal process what happens? The flux will be changing from a maximum value to a minimum value. So that flux change is being noted by the flux meter. Now the, uh, the flux that is being measured is directly proportional to the deflection that is shown. So already the deflection is uh, indicated in terms of Weber term. So you are able to directly measure the flux. Now uh, we have to prove that your uh, deflection is proportional to flux. So for that uh, we are assuming that the controlling torque, air damping as well as frictional torque are negligible. So uh, we have this particular circuit. This is a flux meter and this is a surge coil. And R and L are net resistances and reactances of the uh, inductances of the uh, two coils, the flux meter coil as well as the surge coil. And this is the number of turns of the surge coil. Phi is the flux linking with the surge coil. And uh, this is the this is the flux that is to be measured phi, and I is the instantaneous in current that is going in this particular circuit. So you are having some flux phi linking with this particular surge coil, and E C is the voltage induced in the surge coil due to this rate of change of flux. This flux is we are uh, bringing the flux from some particular value to zero instantaneously. So during that process, your voltage will be induced in the surge coil, and also due to this change in flux, uh, uh, change in this particular flux will have a change in current and due to this some back EMF also will be uh, caused by the motion of the flux meter coil that is once the current is flowing through this flux meter we will have some deflection of this uh, flux meter coil and because of the deflection the deflection occurs in the permanent uh, within the permanent magnet of this particular instrument so because of the Availability of permanent magnet will have some back EMF induced in the due to the motion of the flux meter coil. So that also uh, is that is indicated by EF and EC is the voltage induced in the surge coil. Now the voltage induced in surge coil is given by N d5 by dt where N is the number of turns of the surge coil and d5 by dt is the rate of change of flux linking with this particular surge coil and the back EMF course due to the motion of flux meter coil is given by k into d theta by dt where d theta by dt is the angular velocity at which uh, by which the uh, motion is occurring and k is the galvanometer constant or the flux meter constant and uh, equation connecting the electrical quantities so from this you can uh, write ec is equal to ef ef plus l dA by dt plus i into r this is the uh, voltage that is induced in the surge coil that is e equal to the voltage induced in the flux meter coil plus the uh, drop in inductance and the resistance. So that is LDA by DT plus I into R. So here your uh, current is very small as well as the resistance of the um, two coils are also small. So you can neglect uh, this particular term. So you are assuming that uh, your R is very minimal so this term is being neglected. So, uh, then you substitute uh, equation 1 and 2 in this particular equation 3. So you will have n d5 by dt equal to k d theta by dt plus l dA by dt. Getting the expression over the time interval from 0 to t, we get uh, integral 0 to t and d5 by dt in dt equal to integral 0 to t k d theta by dt in dt plus integral 0 to t l dA by dt in dt. Now uh, the current is, uh, uh, we have the uh, change in uh, duration 0 to t. So we assume that your flux is varying from phi 1 to phi 2 and uh, the deflection is from theta 1 to theta 2 and the current is changing from i1 to i2. So when you uh, rephrase it and you change the integration limits, you will have integral phi 1 to phi 2 m d phi plus which is equal to integral theta 1 to theta 2 k d theta plus integral i1 to i2 l dA and what you can see is that uh, this particular term mm, will be 0 i1 is equal to i2 equal to 0 because 
when you do not have any flux rate of change of flux when you do not have any change of flux that is linking with the source coil your current that is induced in the particular uh, coil is or in the circuit is zero so at the beginning and as well as the end of the process hmm, your current is zero the current will be changing only during that flux linkage process so at the end of the uh, at the far end of the two intervals your currents are zero so this particular term gets cancelled so you'll have n into phi 2 minus phi 1 equal to k into theta 1 uh, theta 2 minus theta 1 or uh, your theta 2 minus theta 1 the change in your um, deflection can be expressed as a function of change in the flux or Weber terms so you have n also available so in terms of change in uh, flux terms so you can, can say that your deflection is directly, directly proportional to the change in flux terms and hence uh, your uh, meter is directly calibrated in terms of Weber terms Now, the certain advantages that this flux meter carries along is that it is portable and your scale is directly calibrated in number terms and uh, the deflection of the coil is free from the time taken for the flux to change or it is independent of rate of change of flux rather it is fully dependent on the change of flux so the factor time is absent in our final uh, result so it is a very convenient method to measure the flux change and that occur for a very uh, small duration that is a sudden change of fluxes and uh, due to the high electromagnetic damping you will have um, sudden stoppage of pointer whenever the flux change ceases and uh, due to the absence of control torque the point will, pointer will remain in that position for some time and the, after that only it will continue to or uh, it will return back to its original position so you can easily find out the flux from the uh, this particular arrangement Thank you so much.